Uh, this theory basically revolves around the national Indian test and they believe whatever the means which are really going to advance their national Indian test, they consider those mechanics, those forces or the political dynamism genuine, justified and legitimate. And they have to serve the national interest even at the cost of the moral standards. Therefore, morality stands subservient to the national interest in this context. This appears to be very much near to the Machiavellian school of thought because the Machiavelli believes that uh, for the sake of national interest or in the interest of the king and the monarch, you can do whatever you like. We will now dilate upon this subject by giving examples from the present uh, political environment going on. You have seen China uh, expanding its territorial jurisdiction by building certain or the developing certain coral reefs and having control of the uninhabited islands in the South China Sea. That has created a kind of confrontation between China and Japan, you know, on the Senkaku Island. And uh, there is a conflict uh, going on between China and Vietnam, China and Philippines, even Taiwan. These are the things basically the major driving force or the, the thing which triggers uh, for such moves or the political moves is the national cause at the national interest. Then we see in the recent past in 2014, you know, there has been an upheaval in Ukraine. In Ukraine, there was a pro-Russian government over there. That was a democratic government. But a kind of uh, political disturbance was created by the Western nations just to topple or just to get away with the pro-Russian government over there. There were protests in the capital for a long time. And subsequently, uh, with the help of a military coup, the pro-Russian government was replaced by the pro-Western government. And at the same time, the Russia also used force to serve its national interest and uh, it occupied the Crimean Peninsula. Subsequently, though, it managed to hold a referendum over there because the majority of the Crimean Peninsula were Russian-speaking people. Therefore, Crimea was annexed by Russia in 2014. In the same country, I mean the Ukraine, the, in the eastern Ukraine, which was again dominated by the pro-Russian or the Russian-speaking people, a movement for autonomy was started over there. This way, in the Western nations try to serve their cause by making use of the force and the same thing was used by the Russian just to serve their national task. And again we have seen in case of Saddam and Gaddafi, these two regimes were toppled by making use of the force by the United States and its allies. Since this was in their national interest, therefore they didn't bother even the United Nations Security Council. They didn't take both of these issues to the United Nations Security Council or try to seeking any support or legitimate power which is enshrined to the Security Council to topple these two regimes. Just a crude use of force was exercised. And then we have seen before that in 1979, Soviet Union entered its forces into Afghanistan. That was again use of force to serve the national interest of Soviet Union. And again, Soviet Union forces were repulsed by making use of the force in the form of Mujahideen resistance or the proxy war, which was fought by the United States through Pakistan. This way, we say in the realism, the countries are more concerned about the national interest and they are not concerned about the means to realize this objective. Therefore, the most important thing in this is security and material power. This thing was quite phenomenal during the colonial era. The imperialist powers of the West to serve their respective national interests, they just spread all around the globe and they started capturing and controlling the weaker nations of the world and then utilizing their resources to advance their national interests. Thank you very much. God bless you.